Springbone, parce que je le vaux bien. Welcome to this new tutorial. Today, we'll be covering spring bones. Oh. Ah, that doesn't matter, you can use spring bones anytime. So, what are spring bones? Well, if you're familiar with dynamic bones used in VRChat, it's basically the VRM equivalent of it. It is used to add physics to bones to make them move around and jiggle. It can be used for hair, clothing, breasts, etc. Let's take a further look. As usual, you need Unity and the UniVRM plugin. You can either create a new VRM or import a VRM by placing it in the Assets folder somewhere. If you have a Vroid model, you have some spring bones already made for you, especially if you added bones to the hair. Now, the most important thing is the object called secondary, located inside the VRM prefab. This is where the spring bone components should be placed, regardless of what bones they affect. If you want to check the effect of the spring bones, you need to do it in play mode. To activate play mode, press the play button on top of the screen. This will automatically switch the view to the game tab. While in game tab, you can't modify much. However, if you select the scene tab, you can get back to the scene. You can select the model and move it around to show the effect of the spring bones. If it doesn't do anything, try moving the hips bone instead. Please note that any change made in play mode will not carry over. So make sure you turn off play mode when making modification of the components. There is a way to carry changes over that we will see later on. To create a new spring bone, select the secondary object and go to the bottom of the inspector and click on add component, type spring bone and select VRM spring bone. Now let's look at the values of the spring bone component. The draw gizmo allows you to show the spring bones in the scene view. They will only appear when in play mode. You can also set its color. This is especially useful for debugging spring bones and showing their effect. The stiffness influences how much the bones will stay in place when the model moves. Low values will make the bones stuck to their original position when moving. The gravity power is used to add an effect of gravity on the bone and push them to a specific direction. High values should be avoided or they would make the bones push too strongly. The direction of the gravity can be set with the gravity deer. It's a vector in world coordinate that points to where the gravity should go. The drag force influences how much the bones will swing around when returning to their position. With a low drag, the bones will fly all over the place, but with a high value, the bones will simply return to normal without bounce. The center indicates what object should serve as the parent container, which means that the spring bone will not move if the parent container is also moved. In the case of Vroid models, the center is often set to root, and as a result, the spring bones won't be affected by the avatar's position. To deactivate that behavior, remove the content of the center field. The root bones are the most important part. You can place here the bones that will serve as the root. Every bone that is a child of any of the root bones will be affected by the spring bones and have physics. You can add root bones of any part of the model and they do not need to be connected to each other. To add a root bone, simply drag and drop the bone into the root bones label and it will add it to the array. To remove one, reduce the size of the array. This will reduce the list of elements starting from the end. Then we come to the collider section. Their goal is to add collision to the bone to prevent clipping in some areas and add interaction with other parts. The heat radius is the radius of the sphere used for collision. Every bone has a sphere attached to it that will collide with the colliders. You can set a list of collider groups the same way as with the root bones. A collider group is a separate component that you can add to any bone you want. Select the bone and add the VRM spring bone collider group component. Inside the group, you can create multiple colliders which are spheres by increasing the size of the array. You can adjust the position of colliders from the scene editor and change the radius through the inspector. 
In order for Springbone to collide with a collider group, the group must be referent in the Springbone. Otherwise, it won't collide at all. So keep that in mind. To adjust your spring bones, go into play mode and move the avatar a bit to see how the bones move. Then adjust the sliders in the spring bone to see the result you want. Once you're done, click on the little icon in the top right of that component and select copy component. Exit play mode and go to the menu again and select past component values. This will carry the values from play mode permanently, however you can only do it for one spring bone at a time. And that covers everything to know about spring bones. Also be careful what you use as a root, you don't want to end up like this. Stay jiggly and see you later.